So I'm going to get started with the topic. Um, let's see, what slide? Can we have the next slide? Thank you. So what is OSINT? OSINT, or Open Source Intelligence, is data collected from publicly available sources. I think that if you have to pay at all, uh, I wouldn't really count it as OSINT. It's public, free, and legal, and it should stay that way. Next slide. So we're going to be looking into what you can do with the following information, names, email addresses, phone numbers, date of birth, social media profiles, and where you can find a lot of this um, information. Am I muted again? No? Okay, I'm good. Including how to build an OSINT template and how to find deleted content, and followed by tips and tricks. So let's go to the next slide. Yeah. You hear? I'm not muted on alt space anymore. Okay, so can I have the next slide then? Because I'm not seeing it. There we go. Thank you. So an example template, this is what my template might look like. Based on how you answered the previous four questions, that's how you're going to create your template. Um, I should also keep a folder with pictures and any public records I can find. I may keep separate records on family members of the target or friends of the target. Next slide. So we know to search for information, but you have to know how to effectively search for information. Google dorking is usually just the usage of advanced search parameters when searching. You can search for a specific string, remove search results that are from a certain site, remove specific strings, search only one particular site, or search for a particular document type, to name a few examples. Next slide. There seems to be some technical problems. It says I've been married. Okay. So going down the list of examples, um, you can search for specific types of files, like CSV files. That's the type of file I search for most. Um, 
the last example would remove search results from a particular site or containing that keyword. So next slide. Uh, a lot of the information, name, address, email address, username, uh, can often be searched for on people's search sites. My favorite would be fast people search and true people search. Fast people search contains info that people will usually remove off of other sites, but they don't think to remove it off of this one. Or people search now will usually have information that's been removed off of other sites. No, I'm not pressing anything. Okay. And now I can't see the slides. I'm watching the stream, but... There we go. So can we go to the next slide? So if you have part of a name, you can usually find the rest of it. If all you have is first and last name, uh, oh, I might need to re-enter space to fix the issues. Okay, then I'm going to try that. Give me just a second. To try to re-enter the space to see if it fixes the issue. Hmm? Okay, are we good? Are we back? Yeah? Okay. Monster, do you have my slides so that I can view them? Thank you.
so let's pick up. Where were we? Here we go. So if you have part of a name, like first and last, but require a middle name, for example, if you wanted to generate a driver's license number with High Programmer, there are several ways to get it. The first thing I check is if someone's registered to vote in their county. Often this registration information will have a middle name, though not always, but it will require other information to be able to get, like date of birth. Um, family search is also pretty great for finding middle names. Um, people search sites will usually at least give you a middle initial and court records will often give you a complete name, including middle name. Uh, next slide. So email addresses. The first thing I'll do with an email is pop it into the new conversation in Google Hangouts. And I'm going to see if a reset will fix the issue. Well, if the reset can't be done, I'll just keep going. We'll get to the end of it eventually. If social media sites have a search for your account by entering an email option, I'll check if an email is tied to any media accounts. Next slide. So phone numbers. My favorite site to use for a number is SpyDialer. Uh, SpyDialer allows you to see who owns a phone number, if it's a cell number or a landline, and lets you hear and save a voicemail as an MP3. It has other search options, but they're not really useful. Um, if you want to find out who the mobile carrier is, you can do so using caller ID test. Some sites where you can send free text messages will require you to know the carrier.
Quiddy, unmute yourself. I can talk for a few minutes and then it seems to keep getting muted. We could do the talk tomorrow. Not able to do a reset. We can give me a slot tomorrow if there are too many technical difficulties today. Hey guys, we're having some uh, technical difficulties uh, with audio um, and we are not able to reset the Altspace VR instance. Um, so we're going to arrange with Squiddy to give this talk tomorrow. I apologize for the inconvenience um, as we troubleshoot the problem. Uh, this was the last talk of the day. Um, we'll start tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I believe the first talk is scheduled for 10 a.m. and uh, we'll post uh, a new schedule shortly sometime tonight. Thank you.